and you may be a hini, my answer won't, my answer won't cry. And you said that we are my and down and no bear air a man at all. So, a jewudi, and to your castle, that was safe. So, when you are young, I will please tell you, man, you will buy our young. I will yes, Christo, give me a bon pie. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to say what you saw? Yeah, what you saw. I'm here to meet you. Yeah, so far. Yeah, this was. Um, you better not program no. I can't box. Uh, me did this asana moye no. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, the far far. Okay. Any, um, men so dear. Me, I do a far far with any, yeah, the far far. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, um program ye, programmer, and we here, and we here be brave. Um, tea, ye per se, ye sure. May or suffer what you are, Jimmy, or bear fee, salvation ye. Na, um, work room one, the BC said ye be so. Um, last month, ye a church membership. Uh, we looked at church membership and then we looked at some of the things that are expected when it comes to organizing of and our membership register. The, the reason why we have church membership registers and the need for those registers and how we need to manage it. Um, quite first one, you crying um membership registers mu um yet to no isifa any um nya ye be ye ewo yeah juma ye di wom ni pa she won sa when any responsibility um ye pe se ye ko bi bi for so e yun mi na um ye in program no din a school of ministry and leadership inti enye ma mi jidi se enye ma ya hwe um ebre a etwe mu no um e fa sa two um top a themes you know leadership any ministry um, sometimes you can put the two together, leadership and ministry. Um, but other times you can separate them into ministry and course, leadership and course, and then delve into topics related to these. And ne me per se a interactive for some part of being time together, a very interactive. And then some part of the time um, will be a delivery from myself. Um, T. Yeah, yeah, better maybe. Maybe uh, maybe the part of a delivery or sort of a presentation. No, maybe I see. Now, yeah, the the interactive part. No, I could be at all. Hallelujah. We want to read from Ephesians chapter four. T. You be the kind of be you know. What me kind my Ephesians four verse eleven. But you'll be all home. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. I'm reading from the NIV. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Um, That's also, yeah. Okay. To equip his people Keep for going. works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verses 14. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the ways, and blown here and there by every wind 
of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. up to 14, yes. Yeah. Um, Ephesians 4, 11 to 14. Sorry, yeah, 14. Um, Ephesians 4, 11 to 14. And nine, which you move to back on adequacy, um, do nine. No, na ono na, wama ibinu maye asuma for, ibinu edi for, ibinu masempa kafu, ibinu ashe for, ni ashe ashe for. Na watoto amote for ye ama osum. Na watoto amote amote for ye ama osum edumano. Ama Kristo ni pediano si akoso. Say yin be doing young cocon bano. Did ye ne ningumu back him? I o nipa, where ye nini? I ye drew Christo, my ye susu dear no tebia so. Nayan no so an sorry. Nayan so an ye motta for a in chechem from my biara was so long be be. Etrin won edi sorry, etrin won di akonia ba ni pa brad de to mu. E ni free a e nam na da ne de mu. Amen. 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 Yeah. Um nia yakin kai nia eku sin na ne se. Um waye ibinum asuma fo wa ye binum adifo wa ye binum asofo wa ye binum asempaka fo wa ye binum achechefo cheche god has made some apostles some prophets some evangelists some teachers some pastors these are um the ascension gifts as we call it in christianity um in theology the ascension gifts and the ascension gifts um, ni eche ni nane se bra yesu efra kostro. That's what the ascension um, points to. Bra yesu efra kostro no. Um, ache dia o she bo se ebeba no. And only the gifts of ministry. Inti, it's either the, the ascension gift or the gifts of ministry. Na, sa ministry gifts ya o de manu. So, like I said, ya in program ya ye ye ya tuni din school of ministry and leadership we're looking at um ministerial leadership ministerial leadership um it will help if you are making notes if you are putting down notes um i know that most of those online are presbyters it seems to me that every one of us here on the program today is a presbyter presbyter um, if not all maybe almost all of us into ministerial leadership. Now, Yesu, at the hour they dying, and it's a why he a binum asuma for a um a d for a sempaka for a sofo ni a cheche for. Now, let me ask. If anybody was thinking of anything else, um, you can bring it. So be dreamy before from where we come from. You be sure to name and I have a boss on. You know, I go to see saying, I can add the acoustic saying, it's ready. I know you are back on. Um, need you know your BP. BP a change a leadership. Yeah. Any other contribution, any other suggestion? Yo, yeah, and also. Um, the, the leadership is exactly what I was looking for. A leadership. Um 
Sa ni pa hudu ya na um portfolios um offices ya ya bobo suina a leadership and a leadership in the sense that um se oba sorry na hu tofwa tofwa ni di a sorry na ni a leader hu osuma fwa osuma fwa um a leader hu asempa kan fwa o ye leader Unu udifwa oelida unu chechefwa oelida hallelujah. So all these um, offices we have mentioned, um, their leadership. So their leadership, not in the world. If you go into um, a corporate um, entity, for office B, it be a petroleum company. Unku unu so be wa efreno udifwa, and I'll be unu visa. But you say, "Uni bebiya, ayen noisya." I would plead that we unmute so that it can be interactive. Let the interaction flow. Um, so those who can unmute, um, without any interruptions, please unmute yourselves, and then the responses can be swift or can be fast. So bebiya wano, bebi ensi unkwaena um didi ni background ni mo, unmute ebe bo ani etu mi interactive. Um, and then we school, yeah, call. Uh, sorry, any service. Ah, yeah, this will be preachy actually. I in church. Yeah. Hello. Hi, so yeah. May train response to Niame Bisano. Pacha Davi set titles and our names in the corporate institutions. Yes. So um where would we find in these offices or these titles in the church. church in the church obviously so if i if i work in a cleaning um company your boss would not be called a prophet no your boss would not be called an apostle your boss would not be called a teacher your boss would not be called a uh, your boss may be a pastor but he will be a pastor in a church mm. Yeah, but when he comes to the office, he's your manager, he's your supervisor. Those are the offices or the, the portfolios you may have in um, the corporate world. And so when we look at these um, offices that we have mentioned, from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, um, downwards up to the 14, it's talking about offices in the church. And these are leaders in the church, leaders in the church. Now these are not the only leaders. Any we move on it, I can defer. I want assure him. Say asuma for a D for asemka asemba kana for um any achetche for asofo. Any we move on it leaders. I want assure him. For um other offices, in some churches you find that there's the um ordination of bishops, ad bishops. Um, there's the ordination of, uh, what else? Um, other churches, what other titles are? Um, um, Elding, Yewawo, a priest, Yewawo, Pope, in the Catholic Church. Um, yeah. So, in our churches, we also have deacons, deaconesses, elders. Yeah. So these are all offices within the church setting. And in the church setting, um, these are ministerial offices. ministry. Uh, sorry, ye ministry in tea. ministerial leadership, yeah, were all these offices. In tea, there were apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Uh, we 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 scale down to having uh, elders, deacons, deaconesses. And then sometimes we have non-presbytery offices. In the Obi the office be um, But we need um, a church leadership portfolio. And the Obi Obi youth ministry leader. Obi um, evangelism ministry leader. Will be a children's ministry, all the ministries. Um, will be a committee be 
a chairperson, will be a committee be a leader, um, will be a uh, director of a certain um, subgroup or organization within the church. Yeah, all these are there. Now let me limit it to Mamifamba Church of Pentecost, because mainly Church of Pentecost now. But we will go on to broaden it as well. In T, with all these um, offices, uh, we find that we all know certain things. But uh, knowledge about some of these things, then you're very solid. So we have gone down to something as basic as this. Um, in Church of Pentecost, Right down from the youngest Sunday school member coming up, uh, we are all members. But in the Church of Pentecost, as we are aware, um, we baptize our members from the age of 13. In the age wise, 13 upwards, a youth. So we can categorize youth from age 13 to 35. You need to me, I categorize youth from 13 to but in the Church of Pentecost, 13 years is counted among um, adult membership. Yes. So we have children, which is uh, 0 to 12. And then adults from 13 to infinity. Yeah. And after our membership, we rise into leadership. Now, how... Do we do uh, these um, appointments and callings? Um, in some churches, you can apply to become a pastor. Recently, we were having a conversation about this. Even in Elim, if you go to Elim, um, the church that we are affiliated to, Church of Pentecost is affiliated to, you can apply to become a pastor. In Church of Pentecost, um, we don't apply to become um, pastors. Yeah, you don't apply to become officers. You don't apply to become um, a leader. Every um, leadership office is by appointment. Yeah, so somebody would have to appoint you. Being a referral into um, an office or into any calling. T. Yeshe, um, the first level of leadership. The first le level of leadership. Hey. Deaconship. If I say deaconship, I mean males and females. And in our deaconship, we have deacons or male um, uh, officers who are deacons, and then female officers who are deaconesses. Oftentimes, um, people think that one um, office is higher than the other, but it is not so. Um, deacon deaconship, if it's deaconship, it is a um, supervisor's level. Okay, you may be more. Say, be my supervisor, say, or by supervisor, a supervisor's level. Manager, and I were on top of um, that level. Into deacons, need deaconesses. Or we now were the same office. And in key, we say, say, or some four. Into your some four, be my any or some four bar. And oftentimes, people have been called into the office. And they are asking what is their role. Yejuman is saying, and then I'm sorry, not you fit a free and ho. Um, say a free will be back or some for you memoir. If somebody is called into the office of a deacon or of a deaconess, it is service. It doesn't mean that other offices or other people do not serve, but this is specifically an office of service. In T, yes, some senior can retrieve money, yes, some. In Tisa or Sum Numuno, Enna, um, ya coin that, um, term or that office, um, some four. So, what are some of the services that we render in church? Um, can I have people respond to this? What are some of the services that we, we see or we offer in church? All right. Being in charge of the church register. Said Deacon. Being in charge of church register. Deacon, yeah. Anything else? 
Definitely, we have deacons and deaconesses on the line, so um, they should be able to help us. Um, the dadsies were going to talk, so you are allowed, please. Okay, setting up the um, church premises for church meetings, both deaconesses and setting up church premises. Wonderful. Anything else? What are some of the services that we find um, in church? Taking care of physical properties of the assembly, making sure they are always Wonderful. in order. Wonderful. God bless you. Amen. Um, so, Mami says teaching uh, in Sunday school. Any other service that we render in church? Deacons need deaconesses are more like some one because I made him with deacon with deaconess in here. As assisting to to prepare the Lord's table normally <laughs> on first <laughs> Sundays. Um, Edward, as I said, me ma watch it here. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think so someone was saying preparing members for baptism. Wonderful. You see, some of these things, they don't readily come to our minds. But um, if we talk about them, then we send um, the signal and then our attention goes to, 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 to them. Yes. Is there any more we can add? Preparing members for um, baptism. That's a wonderful point. Visitation. Visitation, that's service. Right. So these are all services that we will offer in church. Cleaning the church premises. Um, let me give one example. Um, you know, in, in times past, we found that uh, people went to the church premises to clean the place regularly, especially on a Saturday before Sunday service. Um, it will be no not offices in Kwana, it is a but in the church of Pentecost setting or in church setting, it is the responsibility of um, deacons, need deaconesses, you know, the office of the deaconship. And he, um, deacons, need deaconess, as she say, um, I sorry them. Yes, 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 sorry, them. Um, you have to turn them before, uh, you know, service time. Hey, be a na any dignesses me na ne wapa umunsa so, but they all must say you know, you must make sure that the place is in order. Hallelujah. Amen. Inti. Um. Hey, be a wobe ba sorry them wa be chese. Hey, be a nyeta ya ya cleaning cry and run. Um, which is Saturday. But over by sorry, then what they say, uh, we the ye, yeah, the table, see her, that table, no, is he baby, is he, is he, you know, so things are in order. And in the course of service, sometimes things happen, you know, you may hear that, uh, we, especially for the Lord's Supper, we may ask that somebody should bring the table from wherever we keep it to the front or to, um, the center where we will have the Lord's Supper. And oftentimes it's the deacons who will bring it. And so these are some of the responsibilities. Our assignment, Ukuskulaima assignment. Our assignment, whatever office you hold. Um, so your deacons, so your deaconess, so your elder. Um, what your role is. The Ubi officer, na unimni ruler. I can put all of it out in this meeting or in this teaching session. But if there's anybody who does not know their role fully, Please, you can contact me privately, and then we will help you. Yeah. That our work will be complete and will be done um, properly and accordingly. So that's the office of deacons. It's service. You should, you should find something to do. If you are an officer, if you are a deacon, if you are a deaconess, you must be able to find something to do. But I thought, what I'm saying now 
I know that there are members on the line. There are officers on the line. It is not to, you know, um, chastise anybody or castigate um, anyone. But the point is, sometimes, it's not a correct um, term, but post. Nipanenya post in the OD post. Yeah. The person has risen to a certain um, level, um, position. And so uh the 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 are esteemed and then they enjoy that rank or that place in and omunye you may be um yem fre ubi ma um office be say or baby betana baby akron who di position and I di post. Uh, for a juma a wohoma sa office no. Yeah. Yenko elders, so um what do we think is the primary responsibility of elders? What is the primary responsibility of elders? So oh yeah, Deacon, oh yeah, member crana unima utumi yano. What is the primary responsibility? Yes. Minister of the word. Wonderful. MKM Yamishao. That's the primary responsibility. A uh, teaching. So the 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 elder is is responsible for feeding the flock. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah. Amen. And um uh, 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 senior you can with you more. Elders, no, you need a specific term for elders position. In the I can say a sorry penny, a sorry penny for yeah. A sorry penny deacon and our deaconess dear a specific or she for I'm sorry awesome for awesome for bear awesome for bar um for the elder um your company a sorry penny a sorry penny for no yeah but the primary responsibility is to teach and feed the flock so until say obi um elder na oni na misema em se e ho ya to sni baby ya to sni Ain't he? And yet, say a fat ubia, so you obey dikina automatically. Over barbay elder. It's not automatic. Yeah. You can become a deacon, you may stay um, a deacon for all your service in the church. Somebody is not even make, made a deacon. Obey be straight elder. Um, We've seen it, you know, these callings or these ordinations, we've seen it several times. Um, so the office of the elders for teaching, but again they have oversight responsibility. So elders have res responsibility to oversee um, the church, um, to oversee the congregation, the flock that God has entrusted into their hands. In this say, oh yeah, sorry, Penia, you should have leadership um, qualities. The deacon should have leadership qualities. The deaconess should have leadership qualities. The elder should have leadership qualities. That is what we're talking about, ministerial leadership. Um, leadership ministerial leadership. So in the church, once you are a leader, once you are made a leader, we expect that you would have some leadership qualities. And to lead a beer and now be a friend into any of these offices are ah, or lucky leadership qualities. No, um, not unqualified. Sometimes it is our question we whine a fano deacon, whine a year in a deacon, whine a year in a deaconess, whine a year no elder, but why not? That is our same be pain. Yeah, I've heard it before. <laughs> You've heard it before. <laughs> Edward is laughing. Yeah. And again, I want to repeat what I said earlier. It's not to spite anybody. Uh, the point is not to spite anybody. But um, maybe we should be careful. So Paul tells us that um, we should not be too quick to jump into some of these offices and into these positions. Because 
at the end of the day, you will account for whatever work you have, you have been assigned to and you have done. You will stand before God. You won't stand before men. And you will account for, for it. In the, and, and yes, it will be pushing away uh, just be, to become an officer, just to become a deacon, just to become a deaconess, just to become an elder, just to become a sofu, um, or smart for as a for for um or church for we won't scheme and work our ways up to 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 get there. It's a calling, and we we should allow the processes of calling to work. And he said, me as a sofu. Ebia anka Edward in your officer. Ena my friend um say me pese me yen dikin and I me pese me yen elder. They say utumi catch me so sofu. Um me nim say sa a junior wo wo me hui. Ebia ya junior pa. Nyan so me nim ni say me hunsu and I me drew. Hallelujah. Amen. I say me I make him say you be sure. And I'm a boy. It's hard to get such feedbacks. Yes, it's hard to get such feedback. Yes, because today we have become so full of ourselves. You know, so much after titles that if, if such an opportunity comes, um, some few years ago, this term became became so popular. I don't catch. Ube riaso. Hey, me pa ni abo mi di nse ye ye mi di ki. Heaven listen. So, unti, even if the person knows that they do not qualify, they would they would want to take it up. Let's remember that we will account for whatever we have taken and have done in the house of God. Um, let me make this example. Um couple be um or banya dickness or nini kunu noho and uh ne sofo e propose uh um no as officer or bano call sofu no catch and say miknu ny dikin she went straight to the pastor and told him her husband is not a dikin in the on council that's a um invitation we are, we are, we are, um, it's a good thing, says of Nutini. Ah, Um, it was obvious, you know, and you may be CC, yeah. Um, Kibigu Sofono Kreni Masse said, Wafre Sabran Tieno, um, officer. But how many of us can be this bold? Say, Abia, Wankasa, and now when you be, um, ye proposino, say, Omra may a officer. Now bit me a co a friend saying, um, or software now presiding elder saying, if I are a cousin on, um, on yet candidate for such an office in the end drop it. Um, even when we propose people and then we are asking, so be what a same bit here, sadly pay, you won't get a single soul. Mm -hmm. Hardly will you get somebody come out or come forward to say, say, nipa we are. You didn't need any air for um office we know. Me one, me one sensei. And until now, we begin to be able into such an office, such a high office. Now I bet you may be a handsome fata. We be a new one. We be a we be a from Saudi. I know you can't name one same that. I don't think you can tell me any of 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 such. We be a no be a name one same. Enti. Ada ne ho be ba asem no. E ho na ba ti se pie pie ngro fo ano. O ye ni mo ye ni no. Sa na o tie. Be o ye de free ti 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 ti. Isu be mu no no. We are the same people who will say it. But when um the pest Edward but you say ni kru wa ye ma. Ni kru wa ye ma. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're in school. Um, we're learning together. And we're the same people who will say all these things. But when the person was proposed for that office, and then it was asked, 
when they were pleased before all of us and said that um your book um sister Frida suffered in say in a deepness um you didn't need interview at our district level your book um uh sister Abigail that's it in you didn't need district level I'm an aqua interview near in a deepness um brother Michael you wouldn't be a in a deep um bra Collins yeah, yeah, no, elder. Mm -hmm. Time I a boni dino. So be one in one semi, will be a man in a make. So, auntie, a baby a chain, and semba one. One of me a statis, oh, ni any moon, ni any no, ye, um, papa, we, oh, you are the honum and sanka crankaka. All these things we knew before. So, we should be cautious, even yourself. You should be able to come and confide in your pastor, in your presiding elder, and tell him that, boss, in himself, pe masem, in himself, um, we hunu ebi amak, amu ke kambi e o pa imbi so, but me a me me ni me ni me hose, me qualify se me um elder na me diki me dikness, yeah. So these are the ministerial callings. These are at the local level. Now, one important thing that we need to know is that when you are made an officer for the church, you are not made an officer for your local assembly. Church of Pentecost system I run in, your system of governance. You are made an officer for the church universal. The church universal. In Tina, say, Ubi free, Reading District, Timu, Ebiawa, Axbridge. Now, we to Akotna, Kuwait. Oko kuweita, yebe ma o transfer card, yebe troso, a medwe pato office ye ding. So from pacho, Dekin. Yeah, Dekin Edward Senning. Ajay. Dekin Edward Ajay has moved from uh, Reading District, Oxbridge Assembly, Reading District, and has gone to live in Scotland, um, now in... Um, Glasgow or Edinburgh. Amazing. Um, Minyeshi said Edward would like the Kuwait in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll write a transfer card for Edward with his name and his office. And then he will take it to the pastor in Scotland. And then um, he will function there as a deacon. So you're made an officer for the church universal, wherever you go, wherever you find yourself. So you don't come from Ghana to UK and start off as a member. And then after you ever identify when you are your deacon, when you are your elder, and son way to me, I Juma, if you were an elder there. Once you move from one place to another, um, you can operate in the office you have held. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are made an officer for the church, not for your local assembly. And in the same way, you can be assigned even within your, your district. You can be assigned to a different assembly. So you can be transferred. It is not a common thing. Now, let me be specific here. We don't force officers to go on transfer. A pastor person transfer as an officer. You see, Adio, um, these are things that we should know about our church. And that's why we're teaching it. Um, pastor Peso transfer officer here. Only officer no be di hong komo. Officer no, edgy penia, o to me transfer. Say, ye transfer officer be na o se M1 no. Baby, I'm a teaming to me in ko. Um, the person should not be forced. Um, it is only a sofu. And and the transfer, a ye, um, non-negotiable. Yeah. And he said, me te hey. Media finance headquarters say, uh, most of where the one year were uh, reading district. Yeah, you if you are, me yes, me come and watch my pack in your manama. Yeah, but for you, we cannot deal with you that way because you have your secular um assignments or secular job away. Me, I'm sorry, now employ me full time. Me, mm -hmm. I'm a secular job. Ain't baby, I'm sorry, this mean could be, I have to go. Yeah, we don't do the same with officers. Say a deacon, deaconess, elder. 
but yeah, sometimes um, we see the need and then we, we, we speak with the person. Uh -huh. And then, so we'll be to me. According to the presiding elder, um, a typical example, we have elders in our uh, district who live in one town and then go to another town to to preside, even though there are churches in the town that they, they live in. Elder Drew Kwating, who is our district secretary, lives in Reading. He presides Bracknell Assembly. And so he travels to Bracknell for Sunday services. He travels to Bracknell to oversee the flock. You see that we, we spoke about feeding the flock. Um, say, Ubiwo, trouble, Ubiwo issue, Ubiwo Bracknell. Elder Drew Kwating, who has oversight responsibility of Bracknell Assembly, will trek from Reading to Bracknell every time there's something to address. Yeah. Um, the same way Elder um, Alex Nyami, both of them are on the line today. Elder Alex Nyami lives in Bracknell. He's a supporting elder at Reading Central. And just imagine these two people are doing um, cross travel. Yeah. But it's because of the need. And look at how much is going into um, this responsibility of this. A demanding, mm. to say the least. It is demanding. If you ask them, they'll tell you. Um, it takes their time. It takes their energy. But they, 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 have, they have willingly and gladly, um, let me put that word there, gladly and willingly, accepted this responsibility and they have done it over the years um although Drew Quating has been presiding over um there at Bra Bracknell for about five years if I'm right he's been going to Bracknell for five years the past five years Elder Alex Nyami has been coming from Bracknell to Reading the past five years and you know and there are other people with um, similar responsibilities and you are very much aware that in the Church of Pentecost if you are an officer it's a voluntary or it's a volunteer's job. So you are not paid. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an unpaid responsibility. So, you know, we're not, we're, we cannot negotiate about this. Yeah. For the calling, uh, we're all made aware that this is what it is. It's a sac sacrificial job. Now, the truth of it is that the church will not be able to pay all the officers it needs um, to oversee the flock. And we commit ourselves to God, not even to your pastor or to the church, to God first, and we do what we can. Not long ago, just over a month ago, I was a presiding elder. I was in the same situation that Elder Duku acting, Elder Alex Yami, Elder Philip Ade, Elder um, Obed Asari, all of them were in. Unpaid, yes. And Nipano, Neguma Oye Prano, Ibi Vietino, on one resource goes in into um, the responsibility that they are holding. There's an elder, um, Nansen Ayafano Sofu. At the time, Anna Oye presiding elder before buying to ministry. Um, or say he used to spend not less than 300 pounds on church activities. And yeah, for you, in Yanka for you, once MC, a boy for you, be booby. And yeah, ma, ye say ye youth no fa ha ye see, ye see, a sorry here we ye we ye we no. Every month, not less than 300 pounds. Just think about it. It's a sacrificial job. Now, these days, we hear about officers who are agitating. I'm, I'm, I'm reiterating the word. Who are agitating? See into your mocha. Um, Edward Watibi. Please, no. You haven't? Hey, where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I live with other officers who are not. Who are not like that. Yes. Okay. I was even going to ask if you are one of those who have been agitating. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, 
yes, these are issues that are coming up. Um, the, like I said, the truth of the matter is, those who know into church finances will testify and will bear me witness that the church is unable to pay um, all the offices it needs. Now, if we have um, in the in the UK, if we have 41 pastors, both pastors and um, apostles and whatever, yeah, um, full-time um, pastorate jobs, we have 41. Um, we have thousands of offices. In Reading District, we have 109. 109 um, offices. 107, sorry. 107. May the minutes of Mamiya come home. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, but we have 107 offices. If we go into um, the over 20 something districts, I wanna, we will be going into the thousands of offices, Dickens, Dickness's um, elders. Now, Asofu Nokra welfare, um, the church is, is, I don't want to use this, the word struggling because um, it's not the best word. But you know, it's still even difficult. So, in this say, as sorry as you will be to your offices, just think about it. Right from the church in the wilderness, um, the church that left, um, no, the nation, it was, it was a nation. The church, it became a church in the wilderness. A church in the wilderness. So, when the Israelites left Egypt, and then they became a church in the wilderness. Right from the church in the wilderness, there were people who were doing voluntary jobs, unpaid. God in his own wisdom knows that we need more people to do the work. Mm -hmm. So he calls certain, certain people full-time, and then he calls others um, voluntary. Um, and yet part-time, um, don't put the officer's position um, there as part-time. Voluntary. Yes, Yeah, I can discuss this issue because I've told you. Um, I think I've said it before, or maybe at my, my farewell service. My name I So I thought that I could serve as an elder the rest of my ministry and then do my job um, alongside the service. And I was not expecting, not not once, expecting. Any remuneration from Asoria Juma Namiyeno. So, a commitment. Now, the church has um, voluntary offices and has full time employees. So, that is it. Um, deacons, deaconesses, and elders, unpaid, voluntary. Um, like I said, there are people who are agitating. NPR offices, but you see, all of us understand that even before we were called, when we were interviewed and when we were ordained, there was specific um, information, categorical, that a uh, unpaid. Okay. Um, a hard dream say, this one, let's take note of it. A hard dream, see, a bear burden, a dear mass, right? Another time we can talk about the challenges with, you know, being in this responsibility. Yeah, but today we're looking at what the office is. So it's unpaid. So, unti, maminka manuntu minye di na yemfame as an unpaid volunteer in the area na mako 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 comfort me welfare. That is what it seems. As any anipa no, uye di ni efa nuye efa nuye na or babe comfort welfare. But it is what it is. You know, it's an unpaid responsibility. Unti. If you've accepted, um, don't tomorrow go and agitate. Don't go and fight for remuneration. Um, before we did not have officers' appreciation. 
It is something that leadership thought about. Um, one of the good things in, in um, uh, leadership and in corporate um, environment is um, recognition for excellence and excellent service. In the, um, leadership thought say, yang offices, ejuma omoyeno, ejuma suno. It's it's a great role that they are playing in the church. So let's introduce something to pat them on the back, to say well done for all the good job you have been doing. So the church cannot run without offices. The church cannot run without you. The church will not survive if you, as officers, um, Deacon, Deaconess, Elder, in the hall, even members who are not in any office but are holding certain um, portfolios, to say they do a while a member and a youth leader, member and a member, and a member and a children's ministry leader. Yeah, these people, these volunteers, if they are not there, the church cannot run. These other leaders, and like we said from the beginning, let me not dwell too much on that. Yet, time no cry, hey, um, we need to have leadership qualities, leadership abilities. So, another time we'll go into these leadership abilities. So, we are candy for as I see you, you say we or you can be for we are candy for as see you, you say what dance. You are set apart, you know, you are distinguished amongst the rest of the congregation, the rest of the flock. But say, your banner if you muna leader near um you know ni pani na na you can be for any na asemwoho. Hallelujah. And so God will be pleased if we can demonstrate great leadership. It inspires confidence in the people we are leading. It inspires confidence in the leaders, other leaders who work with us. And then it even inspires confidence in ourselves. In the way we came before, no. So we are distinguished. We are distinct. So when we say one name, we feel it. Say, um, Juma Midi, no. And yes, say, um, the chin chin go for us and yata mi abisibo. Hallelujah. Inti usum se wo yosum fwa se wo yosum fwa ba wo yosum fwa be ma usum you should be able to distinguish yourself. Wo ye kendi fwa um a sorry penny a sorry kendi fwa you should be able to distinguish yourself in your leadership. Hallelujah. Now baby I'm a diku free yano me boapa na mi free ho um the apostles the prophets I was looking to point out that God has given so many different offices. And all of these offices, like our brother told us, are in leadership. That is where we jumped from to come to where we are. In Tibia, we are can before. Now, what can you know? As I say, a dance, it must be distinct. Your leadership must, must stand out. You must stand out. In T in ministerial leadership, in our ministerial leadership, we want to stand out. We want to distinguish ourselves. And it should be our prayer. Say erade. Me say dikin. Say mijna erade. Ma nipani mnu se me danso. Me say dikness. Me say elder. Say mijna ma nipani mnu se me danso. I'm not just an ordinary leader. Um, how much knowledgeable you are in the word it must be apparent and it must be manifest and you know um evident in your prayer life it must be evident in your skills how you conduct ourselves yourself it must be evident in all these. Many, many cry at I am a nick and say, which me I can say, Papa, we, Mammy, we, eh, me can be for. Hallelujah. Let me quickly touch on some of the other offices in the church. Every ministerial um, ministries, no, 
leadership are. We have children's um, ministry leader, we have women's leader, we have a men's ministry leader, we have evangelism leader. All of us are members of evangelism. That's one common thing we hear, you know, these days. All of us are members of evangelism, but not all of us can be part of men's ministry and women's ministry. If you're a woman, you're a woman. If you're a man, you're a man. Um, not all of us can be part of, um, what do you call it? Um, can you give me a second? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, me me battery air quality. My stress is very much charged. Yeah. So, um, ministry leadership. Not all of us can be part of women's ministry. It doesn't make you a part of them. You want to um, be part of and learn the things they're learning. But you're not a woman anyway. Or your banal kotna men's ministry meeting more. You're just going to learn the things they are learning with them. But it doesn't make you a woman. I'm sorry, a man. Yeah. And if you are beyond the age of a child, if you go to um children's ministry, we can only make you um, an observer or a teacher, but you cannot be a child anymore. Yeah. So we have leaders for these ministries and they have specific roles. We give them um, specific responsibilities. Yeah. But we are um, leader or any of these ministries. Then you can say the minister or the leader, um, the officer has to be distinguished. What as I say, Osundai. You should you should have a vision for the ministry. Hallelujah. So we 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 must distinguish ourselves as leaders. And in Christian ministry, one of the distinguishing features is your vision. Is your vision. We want to go to heaven. And if we want to go to heaven, um, we don't want to go alone. So every good Christian wants to make sure that he goes to heaven with others. He's pulling others along. And when I shared my focus with you, I think the first um, night we had together, the all, the half night, um, I mentioned this. heaven, And heaven, we want to draw as many people as we can with us. But you must have a vision if you are a leader. If you don't have a vision, what are the people people following you for? What are they coming to look up to you for? They must be able to look up to you. So a leader must have vision. Hallelujah. Amen. No. <laughs> yeah, it's you. Amen. So the leader, the leader has must have vision. And the vision must transcend generations. And your vision should not be here and now, today. Your vision must be able to see into what will happen after you are gone. Amen. Amen. Um, it's a school. So I will, I, will, I will conclude here. I will drop it here. And then we can have time for questions. Um, God willing, next month, let me let me rather say that um next week we can continue. Um next week is for um skills for life, but we'll look at continuing with this. Um and then we will organize ourselves for um the skills for life proper. Now, if you have any question, uh the next 10 minutes we can do questions and then answers. Um if after five minutes, we've exhausted our questions. We'll use the rest of the time for the interaction I was talking about. 
So I will pause here for questions. Yes, Pastor, I have a question. Okay, you, um, may, you may go ahead. Yeah. So with, with the leaders, you realize that some leaders are not, you know, doing their duties and others too are living a kind of lifestyle which doesn't align to what is expected as a leader. Um, you as a pastor, how would you um, handle such um, presbyters or leaders? And second one is um, maybe can, can a leader decide or ask a pastor to be transferred because he, that he or she doesn't feel okay with um, the local assembly he or she finds in his, him or herself? Yo, let me answer the second one first. Hey, Dignes, which you made in power? Oh, questions now, Obusano. Oh, so my hip. All right. So, um, can some other leader um, request or ask a pastor to be for a pastor to be transferred? Um, let me answer it very honestly. It should not happen. You can request it, but it should not happen. Mm -hmm. um, but hmm, in a human institution, certain things that are not supposed to happen can happen. Yeah. Um, I hope you get the point I'm trying yeah. to make. Yeah. yeah. So it should not happen, but sometimes it could happen. I, I don't know how it will happen, but it can happen. In T um young fan say um dickness ruth yeah oh, oh papa hey me area head oh no papa wo, very close relations na me a juma wo, um wo district mu. and then you are not happy with me if you have conversations with your past your father and he has the power it could happen that i may be transferred from the place mm. It's possible, yeah. But like I said, it must not happen. Mm -hmm. But again, there should be, in every such institution, there should be systems in place to check some of these things. Yeah. But human beings are able to circumvent some of these systems. Yeah, and T, um, I hope it doesn't happen, but the possibility, like you asked, it's possible. But Nepapemu, mm -hmm. um, you should not be able, you should not go and make such a request because it's not right. Because yeah. you think you cannot work with a certain pastor. You want to request that union in Fiho. We say that pastors are transferred because of giftings. Um, the pastor who left had his own giftings. He's worked with his gift. His gift, not the gifting, his gift. And he's worked with it or the call. Or the Kwako bless you another place. Another one has come with his own gift and is coming to bless the district. But just because you think you cannot work with the person or you are displeased with the person, you transfer no. So it is not right, but it can happen. So um, I hope I have answered that question. Leaders are not working. How will I CCDI specific? <laughs> how will I deal with it as a pastor? Um there came a time in the last about five years, I heard that um, all oh, officers interviewer, Yemao form mm -hmm. FLA. That's not widespread in any baby. But um, the reason is, um, the officer in the office, in the office, it happens. Yeah. If an officer is not doing his work, um, we can revoke the calling. If you've heard, pastors have had their callings revoked. Mm. Yeah. Obi mm. Wanoi Apostle, you're revoking the apostleship, or be a pastor. Obi a pastor, you're revoking the calling as pastor, no, be overseer. In Tiatisen, you're all starting probation. Africa, no, all starting ministry. Yeah. In the same way, officers' callings can be revoked. Hmm. But oftentimes we hear about revocation because of sin, open sin. Hmm. Um, we have hardly heard that anybody's calling has been revoked because of non-performance, because or a voluntary worker. Oh. Voluntary worker, will be a volunteer, or see on your 
Um, adding technically and logically, adding is all between us. Uh, but as for revocation, it is there. You can revoke. In the, I may not know. I cannot even tell you right now. Semi revoke. He will be calling her. But again, your pastor cannot revoke somebody's calling. Yeah. It is the um, prerogative mm -hmm. of the apostle or the head, the area head. In the, when we do ordinations, you see, so learning, we are learning. Things are coming up. When we do ordination, it is the pastor who I know, the, the local um, presbytery. Now, this is how the callings are done. Local presbytery will recommend people awesome. into offices. In the, Oxbridge, Nebeka say, Yepese Edward, Yedinikwa's deacon. That's the recommendation. It comes from the local presbytery. It doesn't even come from the pastor, even though the pastor can um, contribute to the uh, proposal. Yes. So when the pastor proposes, the local presbytery must approve. If they don't approve, the pastor should not be able to send it upwards. And I make a human institution. Sometimes we circumvent the system. Okay. So when the proposal is done at the local, um, the person goes for a, an interview at the district level. When they pass the interview, they go for an interview at the area level. And when they have passed interview, the area head, usually an apostle, a prophet, or an evangelist, will come to the local or to the district and ordain. The pastor does not ordain. So when there's revocation, the pastor will recommend to the area head and the revocation will be done by the area head, by the apostle or the prophet or the evangelist. Yeah, and the pastor no cry needs her right now. And he said, oh, pastor, you know, say, I bet you calling her. Um, we're learning. These are not secrets. These yeah. are things that you as church members, as church officers should know. And for all you know, many of you are not aware of some of these things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So mm. your pastor cannot revoke your calling. He will recommend to the head. Or as a so chair say, the person did this and that and that, is living in this and that and that. And for that reason, we have to rec revoke his calling. Yeah. Any other question, please? Ruth, are your questions answered? Yes, please. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor, I have a follow up. Okay. Um, okay, the follow up before Bernard. Um, it's actually Bernard asking. Ben is the one with having the follow up. The follow -up. Okay. Uh, uh, Mepacho, uh, based on the revocation answer you gave, um, I just want to find out, sir, are these appointments actually based on a need of the church? And I said, it is, yeah, Kasa calling her, I said, Yame na afreni pano, into no. Are you appointing these people based on the fact that God actually needs them for the job or because the local assembly needs people for a job? You know, in terms of say, what I say, I am only confirming the calling of God on your life. But maybe along the line, I am going to be an emphasis. And I was just saying, I am calling and I am going to confirm it. Who be here for me so then are you telling me, sir, you actually called me in the first place because you needed me to do a job for you and not necessarily God had called me. But, uh, but say, I said, friend, yeah. instead of revoking that calling, is there not another alternative to it? Um, Bernard, let me give you a big task. I want you to answer the question. You share your opinion, your mind about the mm -hmm. same question you have asked. Mm -hmm. I want you to answer it. When you finish, I'll add to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so who is a teacher? <laughs> Personally, no, I believe, sir. Um sometimes you know, depending on the the church, you know. There, there would be a need for people to be appointed for roles, you know, because they need the people to do the job. And, you know, in the process of doing that, you, know, you may end up appointing people who 
on, in quotes, do not necessarily qualify, but the, the void has to be filled. And see, along the line, maybe other more qualified people can come in, but we also hide under the guise of, uh, the disguise of, say, Nyamia from, you know, because you if you go in that direction, uh, it's more or less, sometimes it's very difficult for the person to run away from, because I say, but when it comes to the revocation aspect, you know, um, it when you take the spirituality away, when you take the aspect of it is only a disciplinary procedure, which makes sense. But so, in a way that takes away what you have confirmed, say, every Nyameno. That is maybe a a wana a yana meno me shada and tia against, but I don't really I haven't really grasped it. Grasped it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now let me come in. Your question takes me back to one of the points I would have wanted to speak about mm -hmm. because of but because of time. Um if you look at the the Ephesians 4, 11 to 14 that we read, it talks about apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. Five ministerial callings. Let's extend it. We have elders, deacons, and deaconesses. In some churches, bishop, archbishop, whatever other callings that you can hear about. We'll be called the apostle general. <laughs> yeah. So all these callings, you see, it is God who calls, like you said. Some of you on this line, in this district, there were only one pastor. That is myself. In the church, my portfolio is probationary overseer. You see, so if you want to write my title, it's probationary overseer. But at the moment, my office, I'm acting as a pastor. Look at the way... Uh, ministerial callings are organized in the Church of Pentecost. We have pastor, Ubiya Stati as pastor. Now, um, you will hire callings, um, evangelist, which is even seen as lower than apostle and prophet. Into on top is apostle and prophet. Some even think that apostle is on top, mm -hmm. prophet below, evangelist below, and then pastor. So on the highest step, um, wise ladder, apostle, prophet, evangelist, um, pastor. Some think apostles and prophets are on the same level. But these five ministerial callings, if you look in Ephesians chapter 4, they are the ministerial gifts that God has given to men and to the church. In the, somebody on this line, I was saying that in the district, I'm the only pastor. Um, with the Ebesre, if people enjoy the lesson too much and don't want us to close, uh, we will pray and then allow those who need to go um, to go. And then when we close, uh, we can allow those who want to extend their session to stay on a little while um, to ask further questions. Yeah, and by, I see a point 10.30, but I'll try and finish it off by 35, five minutes extra. Then we can say the benediction and allow um, those who need to go um to to sign up yes into these ministerial callings I there may be a member in our church in reading district ah his ministerial gift is an apostle and god sees that person as an apostle there may be somebody who is an evangelist evangelist. But when it comes to um, institutional calling, you see, we have derived our callings from these same offices, uh, our Bible, the ministerial callings, you know? and then we call everybody as a pastor. So based on what I have just said, everybody is a pastor in Church of Pentecost, but you may have someone who is an apostle. So... You may have someone who is an evangelist. You may have someone who is a teacher. You don't even appoint teachers in Church of Pentecost. You may have someone who is a, a, a prophet, all the five, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, 
um ADI identify an apostolic calling on somebody um me a friend into a higher calling a higher office of an apostle but how many apostles can we ordain it's based on need like you ask into even um deaconship if we have a congregation of of um thousand thousand in and me may officers presbyters leaders into ABI no be by God's calling is a deacon. ABI no be by God's calling is um a deaconess. ABI by God's calling will be an elder. But the church as an as an institution has not identified that person. Has not identified that calling and called the person into the office. So, but nyamidi uhunu sani panosa. Yeah, but say ABI ABI are revoking the calling. In the, in the institution, God does not want to see that. Um, Bonnie, etena, sorry. And yeah, yeah, you didn't sorry anymore. The same thing God does not want to see. Um, we wouldn't want to see because we are there because of God, not because of ourselves. In TC, a revoke you will be calling her. Like you said, um, Nipano, Abi or your apostle. Um, based on the need, the person was, was called. Um, However, you explained it and however you wanted to see it. In Tinipani Afreno, but say BBC, um, it's saying say when you won't you get it because you could not keep your integrity, you have let the congregation down, and that is why your calling is revoked. Ideally, the leader should not, you see, certain things we should not see about leadership. Now, the imagine say we a dick in Noako Boy Jamaya, I didn't see young man for swine, you can before when you're sorry. But the ministerial calling, if you repent, you can still operate in it. We will call repent, but you will still operate in it. Mm-hmm. That's where we say that the callings are irrevocable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the giftings are irrevocable. Um, I hope I have answered your question. Then um, I'm not sure to understand about the answer. Okay. Uh, so, um, I I may have to come back um yes. on yours, Edward. You can come in. My question was also, I think, in line with Bernice. On mine was in relation to the fact that can we not always blame somebody who might have ordained somebody or called somebody into ministry by saying, okay, in fact, maybe I'm a deacon. I've been called to serve, and unfortunately, maybe somewhere along my service, I'm unable to continue and my position or my office has been revoked then they are like oh who even called him into the office so you 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 start to raise questions i want us to also get the picture that maybe genuinely the person who recommended my service was right because at the time that i was i was being assisted or taken through my training I was serving God genuinely, but after my calling, maybe something just happening, I'm unable to continue with my office. An example could be that, can we say that Jesus Christ, he called Judas Iscariot as part of his disciples. Can we say that he made a mistake? There are other servants of God. An example could be Saul. God called Saul as a king. At a point in time, God didn't allow Saul to continue. Can we say that it was a mistake? So it's a question I'm asking. Should we always ask questions when maybe officers are unable to continue with their office? Right. Um, the the blame is unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Um, it's extremely unnecessary. You see, even if somebody makes a mistake, what will we get from blaming? Um, the person or blaming each other. So, like you said, the example you gave, it could be that the person identified rightly, but this person who was um, appointed or was called changed. Nipa to me, sister. If mm-hmm. men can change into the positive, so can men change into the negative. So it can be that this person has changed, changed for the worse, and now is not living the way he was living when he was called as a deacon, when he was living. Um, the way she was living when she was called as a deaconess, you know, Unti, um, Sofuna, maybe or Fanon, probably did due diligence, 
Mm. But ni pano na wasesa. And if you blame the person, you're blaming him um, or her who called the person wrongly. But even again, if even the, the pastor did not do due diligence, the blame will not change anything much. Uh, so let's desist from, you know, blaming. Yeah, we hear that question. Why Nefano tell that? Why Nefano begin? We hear it, we hear it a lot, uh, but they are necessary. Uh, um, sometimes we 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 um, accuse people who are not guilty. Yeah, we should not do that at all. Uh, and they're very much mm. unnecessary. Yeah, but the whole point is, mm. hold on to your integrity and don't go misbehaving so that um, not only about yourself, people will ask questions, um, but now they'll start asking questions about others who mentored you, others who called you, mm. you know, mm. who say a lot of things. In mm. Christoni, Christian leader, um, your integrity is extremely important. A Christian leader, your integrity is extremely important. We don't have a lot of time. Um, like I said, uh, we want to, let's, let's pray. And then we, I can stay on after um, the benediction. If anybody wants to ask any further questions, you are allowed to. In fact, the session is even being recorded. And so um, when we retrieve it, people can listen to the rest later on. So we want to pray. We are praying for all officers. Not all of us on the line are officers. I think that most of us are, but not all of us are. So we are praying for all officers of the church. We are praying for all pastors of the church that God should plant leadership abilities mm -hmm. in all of us. Let Amen. us pray. Father, we pray and thank we thank you. you. Jesus. We, Jesus. we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We ask that, oh Lord, for you will plant leadership. Lord, 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 give us capabilities that distinguish us as leaders from the rest of the congregation. Who give us who has what as distinguishes as us, Jeremiah what makes us distinct from the rest of the congregation. Lord, that we will be able to hold on him, to our integrity. You strengthen that we will be able Lord. to walk in integrity. Yes, Lord. Just as you have called. Lord, stand out. In our actions, stand out in our words, stand out in our teachings, stand out in our service, to in the name in of the various Jesus. offices that Lord you have called us, Lord. You said you will equip your church, Lord. Equip your leaders to equip your church in the name of Jesus. Give us wisdom, give us understanding, spirit of discernment. We will, we will oh, ask Agnes Abigail Dadzi of Basingstoke. This is Abigail Dadzi. Um, probably the children are keeping her away. So um, any other person? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lives of the leaders. Father, Lord, your word has said that you had called these leaders to equip the church for the work of ministry and, Lord, to edify the church. We pray that, Lord, your leaders will not fall short in this regard. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that, Lord, you equip the church with all the tools and all the wisdom and knowledge they need in administering their duties in the church. Father, Lord, let your grace, O oh God, find, find every single one of us. Yeah. Lord, let your mercy also locate us. And Lord, in times of weakness, O oh God, be our strength. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your spirit, O oh God, continually guide us. Let your spirit direct our path, O oh God. Let your spirit convict us, O oh God, in troubling times. And Lord, we pray that your hand will continue to rest upon us day in and day out in as we pursue our duties, oh God. In the name of Jesus, with this and many, oh God, we pray. And we pray that, Lord, you will indeed fulfill your calling in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 
We want to share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of the Lord, 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 the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit be with us be with now us and now forevermore. Amen. Um, um, we are not going off. Um, we've closed, but if anybody wants to stay and ask any further questions, um, you may stay on. Bernard, if you have time, we can look at your question again. So God yes. bless you for joining today. Um, God, God willing, Pastor. next week, we will continue with this at the um the skills. Yeah, it will be turned into school of uh, ministry and leadership. Yeah. Um yes, Bernard. Yeah, so uh if I understand, and then can, yeah. Mm, uh, so to understand, I understand the explanation because as you rightly said in the beginning, all these gifts points to leadership you know so um the the gift itself it is not actually uh, if if i get it right it's not a distinction of sins but it's only placing people in position of leadership now leadership yeah. hello can you hear me yeah, yes yes yeah so leadership is subject to time um to understand. So if somebody is appointed to a place of leadership, and um, obviously leadership are supposed to achieve a certain target. Now in this context, the Bible says that they are there for the equipping of the church, you know, and edifying of the church. So it makes sense if they are doing something contrary to this um, assignment, if they are no longer equipping the church, if they are no longer edifying and they are doing things contrary to that, then it is appropriate that it is revoked, you know. But um, I have a little bit of a challenge when you say, uh, God, it is God who have called you. Yeah, the gifts of, the gifts of God are without repentance. God doesn't, you know, he, he has called you. But it doesn't necessarily mean that because he had called you, you continually to operate in that place of leadership, even when things are not going well. So um, based on that, yes, your explanation makes perfectly, um, it makes sense to me, you know, so that, that's what I said to understand. But where it doesn't um, is when you tell me, say, so let's use you as an example, um, in all humility. Um, so you've been called as an overseer, a probationary overseer, and you've been prayed for, you've been assured that the Lord who has called you this and that and so on. And then along the line, the same people who ordained you come to you and say, well, we are revoking it because when we called you, you did not meet the expectation of the calling. Now, it, it, it raises a little bit, it raises some question because if indeed God was calling this person now, apart from the Judas example that um, they can, um, Edward gave and so on, yes, we have all these human elements and so on, but you don't call me and tell me that, well, the Lord had called you, the Lord has equipped you, He has given you all the tools to do this, and then turn around and come to me again and say, well, we are revoking this because you did not meet the target. So where does God stand? Does God actually need me in the field? Or, you know, it was just a test of, of, of the calling, you know? Okay. So that is the only bit that... Yeah. It's, it's the challenge that you have that we have to help you with. So let's go to Saul. It was God who ordained an anointed Saul king of Israel. God did not make a mistake. He knew what he, were do he was doing. And in anointing and calling Saul as king over Israel, when Saul misbehaved, it wasn't even, even the first time, but when Saul continued to misbehave, God withdrew the calling. Are you with me? Yes, yes, please. So the withdrawal or the revocation um, happens even with God. God does not approve of um, somebody he has assigned us 
overseer over his flock um, misbehaving, um, if we want to put it. Um, Saul thought he was doing right. He says that I brought these offerings and um, these as offerings um, to my God, to your God. He was even talking to Samuel, to your God. <laughs> Such language, yeah. But yeah, Saul started misbehaving and God withdrew. God revoked him, his calling, as king over Israel. Um, in Saul's lifetime, God sent Samuel to go and anoint David. And um, Samuel had concerns about Saul hearing um, what he was going to do and even um, probably coming after him. Yeah. So, you see, God has taught us how he wants things done. And like I said, all the things we do, we do for him. Mm -hmm. We're human. Sometimes we get it wrong, but it's not in this case. So if, if somebody um, is, is called, now the calling is in a human institution. It's a godly institution, but it's also a human institution. And in the church as an institution, you're calling, you're being called and sent. So there are so many deacons. There are so many um, deaconesses. There are so many elders. There are so many pastors. There are so many apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. You know, so many people who have ministry. If it's about having a ministry, so many people who have a ministry. But out of the many people who have a ministry or who have ministries, some are identified and appointed, the word appointed and sent. So you are appointed and given an assignment. Mm -hmm. That assignment, you don't hold it um, perpetually, um, unconditionally. Yeah. And the fact that you don't, if you don't hold it perpetually and unconditionally, there are conditions attached to it. And that is why you are taught how to conduct yourself. You're told how to conduct yourself. So anytime you conduct yourself outside of the remits of these assignments you have been given, this calling that has been conferred, it's a conferment. Um, these, this, this calling that has been conferred on you, it can be revoked. It can be revoked. But like I said, so many people have ministries. So even this person who has been conferred a certain office and has misbehaved, so that office has been taken away, may still have that ministry. So if I'm a prophet, if I'm a prophet and I misbehave, and then they say that the assignment I was given as leader of the church, as overseer in the church, so that title prophet is not just there in my, you know, ministerial calling, but also as my assignment, my appointment, my office. You know, it is that one that is revoked. Okay, so Saul as king of Israel, his calling was revoked. He was still sitting on the throne, but he was not the king. Okay, so that is what happens. And it is to check mis misdemeanor and misbehavior in the body of Christ. And so somebody who cannot conduct himself, who cannot live above reproach, cannot continue to lead God's flock. And that is why the church revokes calling. But see, if you have heard uh, probably our chairman speaking, if you've heard some of our leaders um, speaking, they will tell you that the office is not theirs. So even though in the, the, the dealings of the church, Somebody who falls into sin or who misbehaves or does this or that, um, your calling will be. They did not give you the calling. And so it is not them taking it from you. They don't assume that they have become God. You don't assume God's place or authority. Yeah. It is just a measure here on earth in the church to curb misbehavior and misdemeanor. Yeah. And so now look at this. If somebody is a pastor, and then his calling as a pastor is revoked. His ministry, what God made him, God made him a pastor, God made him an evangelist, God made him um, an apostle, a prophet, a teacher. That ministry may still be there. If God hasn't taken it away, it's still there. He may not be allowed to lead the church any longer. But if this person gets any opportunity anywhere, you know, that person may bring people to Christ because he's an evangelist. You get it. And that is why we must be careful that 
uh, we don't fall into sin and lose that appointment here on earth. But even more importantly, we don't we don't um, fall into sin and lose the ministry. I don't know if you have any follow up. Um, no, I I I am okay with the explanation um, that you're giving. So, um, adding to that, um, I'm not too sure if it is. Um, I want to put it as a as a question, but um, just adding to that. So, if you you call someone into ministry, say a pastor, and then because of some misdemeanor, um, this person's appointment is revoked. And the person also, out of disagreement, moves out of the church and then go and start a church as a pastor. You know, he's been this leadership sort of um, that has been conferred on this person has been revoked at one point or in one place. But the same person goes into another place and then starts another institutional church on its own uh, with this same um, ministry or calling that has been revoked elsewhere and operate fully in there. Now, do you say that it is just the leadership on that person, the leadership role on that person that has been revoked and not necessarily um, um, the, well, I, I, I'm sure that's what actually what you, you meant. Um, mm -hmm. Is it the case that it is the, the position or the leadership role that is revoked and not necessarily the ministry so the person can still function in that ministry anywhere else they go? But it's just that you are not recognized as that leader, so to speak. So if we, we, we used to see you as the apostle of the church, now, you have the ministry of the apostle, but you are not operating as, as a leader or as, as an apostle in that institution. Is that the point you are making? Yes, that is. And let me, let me um, uh, you know, um, expand that point. See, if you have the gift of healing, when you pray for people who are sick, they get their healing. If you have the gift of prophecy, Prophecy and being a prophet are two different things. Sometimes you confuse it. Mm. You have the gift of prophecy. Anywhere you stand, God can please a word in your mouth and then you prophesy. Mm. Yeah. You have the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. If you fall into sin, for, for instance, the common one is adultery. That right. person, not you, I'm not even using you, somebody, somebody mm. who has these giftings and falls into adultery. The gifting... Mm. That gift has not departed. So the person repents. They can operate in these giftings as, you know, they go, you know, um, beyond that uh, fall, beyond that sinful um, episode. They can still operate in a gift. And in the same way, a person's ministry does not die because of that um, commission. Mm, that's right. Okay. Mm. Yes. But... The church will not allow you to continue to lead the flock right. when you have not distinguished yourself as a person of integrity. You get it. Yes. The Bible says that we should we should um uh, what do you call it uh kind of remove the bad nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so if the bad nut is um is the leader, the one standing in front of all of us, how would even outside the see the church. Mm -hmm. You say you are people of light. And now you allow just anybody to lead your congregation or your flock. So this is this is not something we have instituted by ourselves. It is mm -hmm. through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But this, you know, we don't we don't also want to create the impression that we are super righteous, we are God, you know, and put ourselves in the place of God. And that is why we have explained some of these things so that you will understand. It is, it is not our prerogative as leadership of the church. It is God's prerogative. And so if here on earth, you see, God gave the Israelites, um, somebody goes to uh, the forest with 
um, another and is going to cut a branch and then it falls on another or the axe head goes, flies off and then hits the other person and he dies. This person did not intend to commit murder, but there were um, measures to be followed. So even the person who has intentionally committed murder, there were things to be done. God gives us instruction about processes and then procedures and things to do. These systems are in place to check the system. Are we together? So yes. we, the fact that we will not allow you to operate as a deacon anymore, the fact that we will not allow you to operate as an elder anymore, as a, a pastor anymore, does not mean your ministry dies. Mm -hmm. Your ministry as service to the church dies, but your ministry may still be alive. And that one is between you and God. But you see, again, the example that we, we used, um, whenever we find that somebody has fallen into sin, and because of um, dissatisfaction and, you know, um, disregard for authority, they decide to break away and form their own church. Mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge oftentimes with that um, occurrence is that the person does not repent. Mm -hmm. The challenge with it, we've seen it many times. The challenge is that the person does not repent. So leadership is going to lead people. He's taking even some of our members who are loyalists and will follow him or her. So they go, but that person has not repented. And so where will he be leading the flock yeah. that he's gathered? You see the point? Yeah. So these are measures to make sure that we prune the church. We keep the church in check. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it lies between you and God. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've repented, I won't know unless God tells me. And I don't even need to know what's in your heart. God already knows that. Yeah. So your repentance is between you and God. So sometimes um, when we, we are not talking about um, suspension and punishment in church, but sometimes somebody has been suspended. Probably the person repented of their sin the very day they committed it. But you think we'll suspend the person. If somebody misbehaves, I will, I will suspend the person as part of procedure. Um, disciplinary measures. I will. Um, let me be honest with you. But you think that um, that person will be suspended, will be lifted, um, uplifted after two days. No. Before men, God, um, God says that the word of God says that men look at the outward appearance, but mm -hmm. God looks in the heart. Mm -hmm. And so um, in like manner, we will have to have evidence. We'll have to see that this person has demonstrated repentance he has demonstrated um attitude and character that shows that they are remorseful they have repented before we leave them up so even if the person regrets their sin and um is remorseful right from the very day they committed the offense they will be suspended probably the suspension will even come a week two weeks after they have repented you get it yeah yeah and so the revocation um, is a measure to check, to keep the church in check, um, to, to ensure that God's flock um, does not have all sorts of um, uh, blemish and, um, you know, all those other things, whatever word you can, you can add to it. Yeah. And so you're calling, somebody's calling, I shouldn't even be addressing you, somebody's calling could be revoked but between them and God, they have repented and their ministry is still sound and solid. Yeah, but they will not be allowed to lead in the church simply because they have tainted themselves. They have tainted the image of the, the church. And um, it does not, like we all know, it does not speak well of a church, which is supposed to be righteous. Um, having somebody who has such a um, an image leading leading the church. Yeah. Well, well, well. Um, let me let me try and answer a part of the question you asked that I didn't answer. Is it based on need? Yes, it's based on need. Um, in the church, if we have a congregation of two hundred, and we think ideally we need about twenty offices, there's no point making more offices as long as the churches um remains at that two hundred or declines. 
maybe some of them have left and then the church is now 150. So 150 with 20 um, leaders. But as some leaders are transferred out, as uh, we win souls and the church grows, there comes the need for more calling. But we look, you see, anytime there are callings, we look for qualified persons. You get it? And like I said, everybody may have a ministry. So maybe all of us on this line can serve as deacons. All of us on this line can serve as elders. All of us on this line can serve as pastors. But not all of us will be called pastors. Not all of us will be called elders, deacons, and deaconesses. And so based on the need in the church at the moment. Um, so next year, for instance, if there are callings in some assemblies, if there are too many officers already, there may not be callings in that assembly. Mm. Are we together? Yes. Mm. Can we close or somebody has a question? If anybody else has a question, a different one, we can address one more before we close. Okay, so let me use the next four minutes to take feedback. How has the session been? Personally, I, I really did enjoy it. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to the next week's one. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And it's so interactive as well. Yeah, for me too. This is my first time joining. And um, it's quite insightful. Um, one, one thing I took is a, a leader must have vision and it must transcend generations so uh, that's my takeaway from it yeah wonderful can we take one more thank you pastor it's michael here it is it has been very very insightful and i'm taking back the challenge to go before God and pray for visions for the positions that we cover. Thank you. We've already prayed, we've shared the benediction. So God bless you and have a good night. God yeah. bless you, Pastor. Good night. Bless you.